Good morning. Good morning. My name is Michelle Walter. For those of you who don't know me, everybody here knows me, but maybe you at home don't. I am a lay member here at United Methodist Church, uh, North Olmsted United Methodist Church. And it was my privilege to be able to offer our pastor a rare Christmas Sunday morning home with his family. So um, I know Hoyt's watching. Um, hello, and everybody else who's at home. Um, it is Christmas, and we've all been very busy. So let's just take a few moments and uh, prepare ourselves for worship. Um, so I will say to you all the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. My parents' church in Michigan used to say, one side of the church to the other. We're gonna try this this morning. I'm gonna throw you a curveball. It's not in the bulletin. So this side's gonna start. You're gonna to turn to the people on the other side of the church and say, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, now we're gonna return the favor. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you. So we're an active church as we all know. Um, anybody at home who doesn't know us, uh, we have a lot going on. Craig is gonna be starting a new study after the first of the year, starts on the 8th of January in classroom four. Um, and the new study is gonna be called A Year of Invitation, Catching and Attracting, Connecting with Visitors. Um, there's gonna be some training on January 6th, Wednesday at 6 p.m., classroom seven. Uh, for those who are volunteers, anybody, staff who work with our youth, um, they're updating the safe sanctuary policies and anybody who works with children or youth here in the church are required to know that policy. Um, that meeting is open to anybody who just wants to know what's going on with safe sanctuary or wants to have input into um, the guidelines. Uh, Megan has posted um, the new sign up in the uh, Narthex code area for altar flowers. The price for 2023 is $30. You can put a check in the offering plate, mark it altar flowers, and it'll get where it needs to go. And finally, until next Sunday, um, Oxcart Food Pantry is collecting cleaning supplies. Um, we can't underestimate how important that is to families in the area. There's aid such as um, food stamps that help with food, but cleaning products, paper products um, are hard to come by uh, when you're really struggling financially. And um, with that, I am going to invite you to relax and enjoy Marlene's prelude of Silent Night, Holy Night.
Good morning. morning. Please stand as you are able for the responsive call to worship printed in your bulletin. Rejoice. Merry Christmas to everyone. Christ our Savior is born. Oh, come, let us celebrate this wondrous gift. All right, please remain standing for the Old Testament reading Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices together. They sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Next, we will have the unison prayer. The celebration of Christmas has just begun. Even though many of us have gone through the gift giving and receiving, have feasted with family and friends, there is yet another gift which has been given. You, O loving God, have wrapped the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, around our lives. The light of your love through him is shining brightly. It is not a harsh light, but a multitude of bright colors that reminds us of the wondrous ways you love us. Open your hearts and spirits as we hear the words of your holy scriptures and beautiful music. Bring us to you with such joy that it will seem as though our feet aren't even touching ground. Amen. And now remain standing for the hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory, United Methodist Hymnal to to zero. I have a prayer card here in front of me. Um, 
But before I read that one out, I would like to mention this week's birthdays and anniversaries that we're celebrating. Um, so we're celebrating the birthdays of Christopher and John and Liz. Happy birthday. Um, Anita and James and Ellie and Jim are having uh, wedding anniversaries. So congratulations. Ellie and Jim, how many years? 62. Wow. That's a real reason for a celebration. Very good. Um, I'd like to offer prayers to anyone who is stuck in their travel plans between point A and point B, whether it's in a home or a bus station or an airport. May they all get to where they're going safely and rapidly. Um, and a request. Uh, for prayer by Marlene, her friends John and Sue, who are quite elderly. I think she said they're in their 90s and they're battling COVID and it's, it's bad. So they need all the prayers you can get. Anybody else have prayers to offer? Okay. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's Christmas, and with Christmas comes joyous celebrations, beautiful music and lights and family and friends and food and cookies and just all kinds of great things going on. But Father, we're, we're very aware that all is not happy for many in this world. Um, please be with those who need it guide them, bring them to safety and warmth, bring them to health and happiness. <clears throat> Wrap your loving arms around them and fill them with your light. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, you have sent your son to us to show us the way. Even when we have turned our backs, followed our own paths, you offer us light. Forgive us when we are so willful and stubborn. Forgive us when we think more about ourselves and our comforts than we think of reaching out to others. Remind us again that Jesus witnessed to us the light of love that serves, guides, and heals. Thank you for loving us so much that you would give us this most precious gift. And when we again falter and fail, lift us up again with your gentle touch. Pour the light into our lives once more that finally we will fully understand the power and depth of your love for us. Amen. Friends, I'm always reminded of a t-shirt I saw, sorry, and it says, but did you pray about it? And so many of us forget this beautiful resource that we have to solving that which ails us. Don't be afraid to reach out, for God is always there just waiting for us to reach out our hands and acknowledge that he walks with us. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught in the Bible. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a very talented member of our congregation who has offered his gifts for our special music today. So please enjoy this recording of Andy Walsh um, and a little town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
Will the ushers please present the plates for our offering? Heavenly Father, we know all things come from you. And so we take this time during our celebration of Jesus' birth to offer our gifts back to you, that they may go out into the world and help the work of the people who are your hands and feet here on earth. May this gift do the absolute best of your will. Amen. Now we get another treat. We have another very de uh, talented member of our church. Nancy Driftmeyer has prepared a piece to share with us this morning. Thank you. 
can't see. It was beautiful. So the gospel reading, if you could please follow along as you wish. It's a passage that as a young person I didn't understand real well. John kind of speaks in code. <laughs> in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life that was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of the man, but of God. The word of God for the people of God. Please join me in hymn number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
as I was writing this reflection piece at home, I debated its suitability for Christmas morning. We're going to talk about a topic that a lot of people have trouble discussing. Oh, you know what? I started off wrong. I have a misprint. Sorry. What is your favorite color? Most people have no problems answering that, right? Who said blue? Shar? The next question's harder. By the way, if case you're wondering, my favorite color is yellow. Shar, why? Why is blue your favorite color? Oh, now that's a great, for those who didn't hear her, she said her favorite color is blue because the sky is blue and her eyes are blue. And John once gave her permission to buy anything that was blue because it went so well with her eyes. Yeah, I don't have that great of a story. I like the color yellow because it's the color of sunshine. And sunshine makes me happy. And you see, my love for the color of yellow came about as a result of my battle with seasonal depression. Um, it's sometimes known as SAD, appropriately so, SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. It's common during the winter months when the days are short and the nights are long. I am very happy to announce that we have hit the shortest day of the year. The days are going to start to get longer now. You see, I work third shift at a hospital, and it would be dark when I went to work. It would just be starting to get light as I came home and prepared for bed. And when I woke up in the afternoon to start dinner, it would be getting dark again already. I only got to see sunlight on my days off, if such a thing exists in an Ohio winter day. I was working as a labor and delivery nurse at the Cleveland Clinic downtown at their main campus. I loved that job. And I met a nurse there who has become my best friend. I call her a sister from another mother. Um, she is a godly woman and full of wisdom. She has been worth with me through some of the worst times of my life. And I pray that I have been there for the worst time of hers as well. One night, we were talking in the hallway near the monitors, as we were wont to do when our patients had epidurals and were trying to sleep. It was the wee hours of the morning, and that was a time when conversations were either really silly or really profound. I was telling my friend that I was feeling low, and I couldn't figure it out. I told her that I had had a number of bouts of crying with little or no provocation. I told her that I felt disloyal to God because I was so richly blessed in my life. Instead of feeling gratitude, I could only cry. It turned out that my friend was the right person to talk to about this problem, a woman of faith and a nurse. My friend listened carefully, and then she said to me, Michelle, you do this every year. As soon as the clocks change in the fall, your personality changes a bit. I have seen you struggled with this for quite some time. 
I was a little taken aback by her answer. You see, it took someone who knew me so well. She knew me so well for so many years. And she had enough distance from the problem to see what the problem was. You could say that she knew me better than I knew myself. I was not thrilled at the idea of taking antidepressants. So I tried some more conservative measures, light therapy, which just gave me headaches, <laughs> a tweak in my diet, didn't do much. Finally, during one particularly tearful day, I called my doctor and I made an appointment. Seasonal depression is not about being ungrateful or being morally or spiritually weak. It's about brain chemistry. The lack of natural light changes the production of certain neurotransmitters in your brain. Take a pill to fix the chemical imbalance and it mostly goes away. I also talked with a counselor who helped me deal with some of my stressors that I was facing and that helped too but I don't know how I would have been able to recover my old happy self if it weren't for my faith and my bestie. The Apostle John tells us that Jesus is the light of all people. When our lives are dark, we can look to Jesus and find abundant light. In fact, John 1.5 tells us the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So you see, no matter how dark the darkness is, or how long it lasts, it does not overcome the light that is Jesus. It may seem that there are times that Jesus is the only light in our life. Jesus had many descriptive names used in the Bible. I looked it up. There's 25 or so that are commonly known. Some scholars have suggested that there are over 200. Some of these names are Savior, Redeemer, Bread of Life, Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Teacher, Lamb of God, Son of Man, Living Water, the Word, and finally, the light, just to name a few. Why so many names? Why? John does use all of these names, but he is careful to link Jesus back to Genesis 1-1 with his words, in the beginning. It is between the words of Genesis 1 and John 1 where all of Jesus' many names and titles are used. Since Jesus is the incarnation of God, I think that it makes perfect sense that there are so many names and titles. You see, widespread literacy is a pretty modern phenomenon. So the different names highlight a different part of Jesus' divinity. How can you make concepts of omniscience and omnipotence an omnipresence understandable to someone who has a first century worldview. In fact, how can you make all of that clear and understandable to somebody in our own time? The different names all highlight a different aspect of the awesomeness that is Jesus, the incarnation of God. So let us return to Jesus as light. Light in biblical times came from two sources, the sun and fire. These sources of light provided a source of light to be able to see by, provided security at night, warmth, a way to cook, as well as a way to navigate using the light of the stars. Light was not taken for granted. The ability to produce light in the form of fire could mean the difference between life and death. Not all sources of light are the same. In modern times, 
no matter how bright the fluorescent lights of the hospital were, how warm my furnace kept the house, how well the microwave could cook my food, or how accurate my GPS was, I still felt like I was slowly dying inside. The light I was looking for was found in a book called the Bible. And in a lowly stable in Bethlehem. I started out thinking that I needed some sunshine, S-U-N-S-H-I-N-E. And what I really needed was some sunshine, S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E. As I was preparing for this reflection, it brought to mind a wonderful hymn that was popular at work mission. Sandy probably remembers that singing this at work mission. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Hymn number 601 in the United Methodist hymnal. It's a fairly simple tune, and I think that's why it was so popular for the kids. I will read the words first, because I really want you to hear them. And then I invite you all to join in as we sing the entire hymn together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way. Still, you're right there beside me. Nothing I will fear as long as you are near. Please be with me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side, and I will love you till the end. Please join me. For thy word is a lamp unto my feet, found in number 601 in your hymnal or with the words projected on the screen. Now please stand and join me for hymn number 251, Christmas Comes with Lots of Singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Now go, bringing the joy of God's love with you to all that you meet. Go tell it on the mountain. Remember that God is with you in all you do. Rejoice, for God's light has come for the whole world. Go in peace, and may God's glorious peace always go with you. Amen.